بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hello everyone welcome to this new vocabulary lesson Unit 30 Let's get started Before I start the lesson I want you to focus on the stressed part of every word Word number one is adapt a test dovetail enormity falter foreboding forlorn Haughty, impediment, imperative, loiter, malinger, pithy, plunder, simper, steadfast, vaunted, verified, wave, and right. Word number one is adapt. Adapt is a verb which means to adjust or change to suit conditions. For example, some animals may adapt to new living conditions. Another example astronauts may need to adapt to living in space. One more example. Schools may need to adapt their timetables to adjust the conditions in Ramadan. Next up is the word attest. Attest is a verb which means to bear witness, affirm to be true or genuine. For example, some schools, they may ask their students to attest their satisfaction about their services. Or some mosques in Riyadh ask you to attest your satisfaction about the service you receive in these mosques. In the picture here on the right, this woman has attested that that man is innocent. <laughs> hey, if you need a pasta recipe, I can attest from personal experience. It's a good one. Next up is the word dovetail. Dovetail is a verb which means to fit together exactly. For example, some carpenters, they may use dovetails to fix pieces of wood together. And this episode here really should dovetail with that one. You can consider this one kind of like a sequel to that one. Next up is the word enormity. Enormity is a noun that means the quality of exceeding all moral bounds or an exceedingly evil act. Huge size or immensity. For example, child abduction, forced labor, and selling babies are examples of enormity in some communities. Also, the word enormity means an exceedingly evil act. For example, the Satan may lure you to commit enormities. Another meaning for the word enormity means huge size or immensity. On the last picture on the right here, some people enjoy looking at the enormity of stars in the space. Next up is the word falter. Falter is a verb which means to hesitate, stumble, lose courage, and also it means to speak hesitatingly or to lose drive or weaken or decline. For example, this man on the left here may falter because he doesn't have anything to hold to. In the middle here, a student may falter in front of his teacher and the prices of oil have faltered during COVID-19 lockdown. Next up is the word foreboding. Foreboding is a noun which means a warning or feeling that something bad will happen. And it also functions as an adjective, meaning marked by fear or ominous. For example, a house that has been deserted for many years is considered a foreboding place. I think the internet is a dark and foreboding place where criminals and scam artists are lurking trying to dupe them. Next up is the word forlorn. Forlorn is an adjective which means totally abandoned and helpless. It means also sad and lonely, wretched or pitiful, almost hopeless. On the left here, this house is forlorn. It has been deserted since 1997. And the boy in the right here is forlorn because he lost his money. It seems so forlorn without them. This is the consequence, you see, madam, of marrying a daughter. Next up is the word haughty. Haughty is an adjective meaning chillingly proud and scornful. Some politicians may be haughty towards their people. Next up is the word impediment. Impediment is a noun which means a physical defect or a hindrance or an obstacle. For example, to achieve your dreams, for sure, you will encounter some impediments like lack of money, moving to new places, and so on, and so forth. 
Next up is the word imperative. Imperative is an adjective meaning necessary or urgent. And also it's a noun meaning a form of a verb expressing a command that which is necessary or required. For example, it's imperative to go when the traffic light is green. Next up is the word loiter. Loiter is a verb which means to linger in an aimless way. Or hang around, dull, for example. Some students may loiter around the school if they don't want to join their classes. Next up is the word malinger. Malinger is a verb which means to pretend illness, to avoid duty or work, or to lie down on the job. Some students may malinger to avoid doing the homework by pretending that they were sick. Next up, next up is the word pithy. Pithy is an adjective which means short but full of meanings. For example, the sentence in front of you is pithy. It means a lot. Many of the verses in the Quran Kareem are pithy. They mean a lot and they are short. Next up is the word plunder. Plunder is a verb which means to rob by force or especially during wartime and also to seize. The person on the left here plundered a fortune and went away. On the right here, as you can see in the picture, the man is trying to plunder an amount of money. So it means to rob by force. Next up is the word simper. Simper is a verb which means to smile or speak in a silly or forced way. And also simper is a noun which means a silly forced smile. For example, some students may need to simper to avoid shyness during their presentation if they do a mistake. Next one is the word steadfast. Steadfast is an adjective which means firmly fixed or constant, not moving or changing. For example, I urge you to be steadfast in your efforts to achieve your goals in life. Next up is the word vaunted. Vaunted is an adjective which means much boosted about in a vain or swaggering way. The person in the picture here is saying that I'm really special because there is only one of me. He's a vaunted person. Next up is the word vilify. Vilify is a verb which means to abuse or belittle unjustly or maliciously. For example, voters have become thoroughly disgusted with the candidates who vilify their rival's reputation. Next up is the word waif. Waif is a noun which means a person, usually a child, without a home or a friend. Or it also means a stray person or animal. Or something that comes along by chance. A stray bit. For example, you may see a lot of waves begging for money at the traffic lights. The last word in this unit is the word rye. Rye is an adjective which means twisted or turn it to one side or cleverly or grimly humorous. For example, some comedians are known for their rye remarks to amuse their audience. In high school, Mr. Roussel's wry smile under his handlebar mustache. That's the smile I use, that's his smile. Well, that completes our work on Unit 13. If you like this video, do not forget to hit like and subscribe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.